Hey YouTubers, welcome back to Nime Tutorials. Today I'll be showing you how to use the Group By node, probably one of the most common nodes that you will use in Nime. So let's get started. <laughs> One of the most common use cases for the Group By node prior to Nime version 4.0 has been to remove duplicates in a data set. Nime 4.0 released with a new duplicate row filter that is specifically designed to handle duplicate values in some really interesting ways. But the Group By node will still do the trick and much, much more. Don't worry, I will cover the duplicate row filter in a future video. The Group By node allows you to group your data by columns of your choosing. Along the lines of it serving as a duplicate filter, you build a key for the values you want to group by, selecting multiple columns to group. Based on your grouping, you can then select additional columns to aggregate your data, which goes beyond simply grouping the data. There's a whole host of options to choose from, and we will explore some of them in this video. For the examples in this video, I'm using a data set of popular baby names for the city of New York from 2011 to 2016. You can find the link to the data set in the description below. To begin, I read in the CSV file. Remember to check the box Read Column Headers. Otherwise, everything else is just set to default for this data set. Remember though, some CSV files can be fickle and require more configuration. As a best practice, once I read in a data set, I like to annotate the node so I know what data set it represents. In this case, we will call it baby names data. After reading the file in, right click on the node and select file table. The read in data will appear in a pop up window and in the top, you can see how many rows the data set has. This particular data set has 19,418 rows. Let's grab a group by node and connect it to our CSV file. Double click the node or highlight it and press F6 to open the configuration window. To start, we're going to do a very basic, in this case, only unique names group. On the left side, you will see your available columns by name. On the right, you will see the columns you've selected to group by. Double click the child's first name column from the left. It will move it to the right. Alternatively, you can left click the name of the column and select the single right pointing arrow to move the column. The double arrows will move all of the columns to the right or left, depending on which double arrows you've selected. At this point, we're not going to configure anything else. Just click OK. Once back in your workflow, you'll see a yellow exclamation mark on the bottom of your node. If you hover over the node, it will tell you that no aggregation column was defined. That's totally fine. We are not trying to aggregate anything at this point, just group. Execute the node by right clicking on it and selecting execute or selecting it and pressing F7. Once the stoplight is green, right click the node and select output table. Notice the row count. It is now 3021 and you only see the child names listed. You've just filtered the data by unique names only. But as we look at the data, you'll notice something concerning. Some names appear in all caps, while others are in title case. Looking at the data further, I discovered that the 2011 and 2012 entries are the culprits in uppercase. For a group by, a name in caps versus title case are technically different. So, there's one more step we need to take before we group the data to get a list of unique baby names for our entire data set. We need to use the String Manipulation node. Add the node to your workspace before your Group By node 
after your read in data. The string manipulation node offers some fantastic functions for working with string data, like non-numerical data types. In this particular case, I want to convert the all caps entries to title case, where the first letter of a word is uppercase, followed by lowercase letters. In order to apply this function, first you select the function capitalize str in parentheses from the list of functions. In this particular case, the str portion of the selection is just a placeholder indicating the string data column that you will apply the function to. When you double click the function, it places it into the expression section of the window. You will notice that the str placeholder is gone and you just have opening and closing parentheses. Place your cursor between the parentheses and then double click the name of the column you want to apply the function to. The name of the column will populate between the parentheses and now you have a complete expression. If you want to explore how this works or to double check your work, below the expression section, leave the default append column selected. In this case, I am going to select replace column and overwrite the child's first name column. Click OK and execute the node. Take a look at the group table output of the node. We have 1,775 rows now, a difference of 1,246 rows. It's this kind of data quality checking that is key in working with your data sets, especially if you're not intimately familiar with the data. Another good best practice is to annotate what you did to the data in the node. So in this case, we might enter capitalize colon child's name as an annotation in the string manipulation node. As we explore grouping our data a bit more though, something else emerges here that we need to take into account. While we grouped just the unique names, if we group the names with their gender, a slightly different number comes out. When we use gender and the child's first name as our fields to create the key, we actually get 1,804 unique entries. That's because some names that appeared on this list were both male and female names, like the name Angel, for instance, in rows 94 and 1,040. And again, for the name Avery in row 146 and 1,070. Okay, let's get into a little more grouping. While we've been working with names here, let's switch to some counts for the years. Add a new group by node, and instead of child's first name, select the year of birth and move it to the right. This time we're going to select the manual aggregation tab and add the count field. The count is the count of children with that name for that year. To see the total children for that year, we need to set the aggregation as the sum. We simply click on the drop down and select sum. At the bottom of this window, you'll notice a column naming option. I prefer to keep original names, but you can use what makes sense for you. If you want to avoid unnecessary renaming later on, switch it to keep original names. Click OK and execute. Now we have some interesting results to look at. Something happened with the data in 2015 and 2016. Unless there was a significant birth decline, which could be possible, it looks like the data collection method may have changed somehow. There are other reasons why the value here is much lower than the previous years. I just don't know why that is. Let's do one more. I want to know what name had the greatest count overall of all the names on the list. You may already know how to accomplish this. Just reconfigure the group by we just created. Move the year of birth back to the left hand side and put the child's first name on the right hand side. 
Because we want the sum of that name across all years combined, we're going to leave the manual aggregation at the sum of the count column. Execute. When you open the group table to look at the output, you may notice that they are not in numerical order. To solve for this, simply click on the header, count, and sort descending. Now we see that Ethan has the most with 5,913 children that bear that name. A couple other notes about the group by node. When you open the node configuration, aside from the manual aggregation, you can also conduct type-based aggregation. This lets you aggregate all of the columns of a specific data type. Finally, another aggregation that can be very powerful if you have a lot of columns that have similar names that you can discover via a pattern such as column one, column two, and column three is the pattern-based aggregation. For this example, I'm simply looking for the column that is marked gender. The aggregation is list sorted. When we execute this node, you will see a list in the column gender for each time the name appeared on the list and what gender it was. Something else you can do that would be interesting is to do the same list based on the ethnicity column and then take a look to see what the results are. While this isn't necessarily a great example of how to use pattern-based aggregation, just remember that if you have a lot of columns with pattern names that you need to aggregate the same way, this can be a quick and easy way to do it. If you don't know it already, I highly recommend getting familiar with regular expressions. If you have access to lynda.com or LinkedIn Learning through your local library, I highly suggest their course on regular expressions. NIME is full of opportunities to use regular expressions to control your data, and you'll do some amazing things with that skill set. You'll often see checkboxes or fields like the one here to use a regular expression to search for a pattern to control your data or manipulate your data. Tip, if you have selected multiple fields to aggregate by and want to aggregate in the same way, hold down the shift or control command, depending on if you're on Windows or Mac, and click them. Right clicking will bring up a menu that lets you change the aggregation method all at once. This can save you lots of time. Also, if you want to include missing data in whatever your aggregation is, if it supports it, simply check the missing cells box. Two more things. When you're using the manual aggregation option, you can add the same column multiple times to get aggregated in different ways. So, Say that we want to group by the child's first name and then sum the count and also get the mean of the count. We can. Just remember that you cannot keep the original name at this point. You have to change it to the aggregation method, column name, or column name aggregation method. When you output the data, you will have multiple aggregations based on the count field that you selected. Finally, there are a lot of ways to aggregate your data in this node. I could spend a whole video just covering those alone. I recommend experimenting with some data and exploring how these aggregations work. If you hover over the aggregation options in the list, you'll get a quick note on what they each do. Well, that's the group by node. It can be quite the workhorse for you. I hope you found this helpful. If you need me to go even more in depth, please leave a note in the comments. If you like this video, feel free to comment and don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe.